Welcome back to Runabout Revival. In this episode, we continue to attack the new engine harness from both ends. After completing the production of all new flying leads from each of the sensors, we move on to power distribution with the beginning of the construction of the bespoke fuse block and relay station within the cabin. But that's not all, as we are also multitasking to advance a spectrum of other tasks with the ultimate goal of bringing this dream to a reality. Every new install, connector, circuit, fuse, and relay is a brushstroke on the canvas and a testament to the pursuit of automotive perfection. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. This is Runabout Revival. Hey, it's the weekend again, so let's get to work. I want to give you a quick update on a few things I'm working on. So I'm just starting to put together some of the fuse and relay station. I already have my normal relays for some of the items that need it. I also got a main relay to be the master on for the entire setup and is continuous. Uh, and a little bit beefier relays as well in case I decide to use those on some of the fans. These are up to 30 or 40 amps. That should be more than enough. Uh, but just in case I did get a couple of these. So the main cable that comes off the body will come into this main relay. And then from there, we'll go out into the fuse box. And the fuse box will have all the fuses needed for each individual relay circuit, uh, any power circuits, etc. So putting that together now, I have a plan for it for a couple weeks or months now. I'm going to prototype it in cardboard first before I start using my ABS plastic so I don't accidentally screw something up or make a change once I start doing it. Don't want to have any extra holes or things I don't want to ultimately use in the final product. So I'm going to make it first in cardboard, make sure it's set up the way I want, and then I'll transfer that over to the actual ABS. Call that CAD cardboard aided design. Old school trick. I have CAD as well on my computer. I've been doing AutoCAD over 20 years now, I guess. But sometimes for simple stuff like flat 2D shapes, it's just easier to use cardboard. Don't want to take a bunch of measurements. You can just kind of try some things and change it on the fly. And then I don't have to run back and forth between my garage and my office to update things in the design, things like that. So, all right, just did a little CAD. This is the flat surface area I have inside the bin behind the driver's seat. It's not exactly flat on the bottom. So I've actually made a contour piece as well as a height measurement as well. So I know how much room I have internally. This will help me in designing the cardboard templates I'm gonna use to mock up how I'm gonna set up everything, where I'm gonna drill my holes for wires, all that fun stuff before I move it over to plastic so I can kind of play around with it. And I have a ton of cardboard that happens to just be cut all to the right size from when they wrapped up the uh, ABS plastic. So I have many options to play around with before I go ahead and move my prototype design onto the final piece. Okay, so this is the layout that I've decided on going with. The issue I kept running into is when you put the AM connector on top of here it's pretty tall and so because the bottom isn't exactly flat in that thing it starts off shallower here and then goes deeper as it goes over i wanted to make sure i had room one to mount the solenoids which are going to go underneath here at approximately that level just slide them under here and then I still have room for this connector to go past the side of the fuse here so start a relay main relay fuse block and the wires are actually going to come in underneath the panel and then come up through this is going to be a hole here, another gap here, and then connect in the positives and the grounds here, and that should give us room for everything that we need. All the wires plugging into the input here will probably go through a hole right here in between. Either that or I'll just have them come through here. I haven't decided that yet. I might actually move this over and then have them come out right here, but more to come on that. All right, so that, I also got an updated AEM, the Lambda 4.9 wideband. And I don't know why I was thinking about it, but I went ahead and made a loom for my narrow band, which I'm ultimately not gonna use. I'm not gonna remove it from the downpipe. I'm just gonna leave it in there and just have it dangling essentially. I'll, I'll secure it away, but not gonna plug it into anything. The AEM does not require the narrow band. So we're just gonna use this upgraded Lambda 4.9. I have a very old AEM wideband in there now. It's been sitting in the car since I put the downpipe on there maybe in 2007 or so. It also went to a gauge, not to the original AEM Series 2 ECU that I was using, the Uego gauge. So the wiring goes up through the cabin on the passenger side and up to the ashtray pod, or where the ashtray goes. There's a dual gauge pod that I'm using there. I'm just gonna put in the new sensor, create a new uh, wiring loom that'll go directly from where it is on the downpipe, 
wrap around into the hole into my location where all my electronics and the EMS system are going to be housed inside the cabin. Just make it a little easier and make sure it actually works. Just take care of it now so I don't have to do it later. I still haven't made my looms for the four injectors. That's the last thing I have to do, I think, in terms of replacing the OEM harness, which my example harness here is almost done. I ended up not being able to find the connector for the knock sensor. So I cut the knock sensor off of this one and put it onto a new shielded cable and ran a new loom using this eighth inch Alex Tech expandable loom protector. It's good enough for one wire, uh, matches all the other stuff I'm using, mostly quarter inch and for anything larger than three cables, I'm using three eighths inch. Over here, since my gauges aren't working, don't mind this, since my gauges aren't working for the new EMS system, uh, they're old serial style gauges from AEM. Those aren't roughly supported by the new Infinity system. So I'm going to replace one with a CamNet AEM sensor or CamNet AEM gauge that, like my old serial gauge, cycles through all the options and shows you all the various different things uh, that we have sensors for so I don't have to whip out the laptop, especially since I'm using my OEM gauge set, not like a AEM dash. And the other one, I'm using this 52 millimeter blank. And I'm going to wire in two switches here. Uh, since I didn't want to mess with this giant cluster, this is the fan EMS system. Rather than make that mess of wires, I'm just going to simply control it from one of these solenoids. And then the signal wire is going to come from one of these two switches here. And the switch just has a little blue LED since everything in the cabin is blue. When you flip the switch on, it uh, lights up a little tiny blue LED. I'm going to fit two of those in this blank here. So that's going to look nice, I think. And... Uh, Kind of clean up some of the wiring and i'm just going to run the signal wire direct down the center console underneath the armrest which is still up here by the way i think these are all the looms now that i've created i've dropped this one here there's uh, the starter section there that's all the wiring i think i'm going to need i'm also integrating this is the dual cooling fan wiring that i'm going to use for this engine shroud with the two spall fans on it. Uh, I still need to paint the engine cover, so I haven't put that together yet, but just wanted to have an idea on the wiring. This came from MR2 Heaven that I bought that from. So I'm actually gonna replace this and integrate that harness. Again, it's gonna be switch control. I'm not gonna use their switch that came with it. This one here, it's just a little bulky. I'm gonna replace it with one of these two little guys here. I got a pack of 10 five different colors these are the two blue ones i think i paid like six dollars or something on amazon they're pretty good quality that'll work fine and if they don't i'm gonna replace them not a big deal this blank was also like six or seven bucks on amazon got the switch pod done that'll be the intercooler and the engine lid fan these are the hall sensors i went ahead and loomed them they came with just the wires so i put a loom and as well as a Deutsch three pin connector on there. There's only one now in this bag. There used to be both of them, but the cam sensor is already installed in the engine bay. I was reading the instructions and it said to put the sensor until it touches the sen until it touches the trigger and then back it out full two full rotations. Um, I took off since my trigger wasn't exactly since my trigger wasn't exactly in line with where the hole was, I was afraid that I would put it in too far and then have it actually like whack the sensor. So I went ahead and took that off again and actually checked it. And basically it's just barely, after two turns out, it's barely inside of the housing there. Maybe half a thread, not even that. So I just wanted to show you what that looked like. I'm actually going to mount a three pin connector to this because it's not quite long enough to get all the way in there, give me enough space to work with it. Put a loom on it for now. I'm going to put the other nut on there before I put this back in place. But just wanted to show you what that looked like in case you guys run into the same problem. Also, the boost solenoid, that little box right here. Originally, that was on a little bracket that came off of the intake pipe. I just literally wire tied or zip tied it, I think, onto there and I bent a little metal bracket. Just two holes for the two screws that hold that solenoid so I could keep it kind of close to the turbo. It was a little janky. And also, uh, the bracket, I lost it. <laughs> so... Uh, rather than remake a new little janky crappy piece like that, bought a little billet bracket that attaches to the solenoid. And then I'm just going to attach this to the rear firewall to the left of the heat shield and run slightly longer hose between the sensor, wastegate, and the turbo inlet. It'll still be pretty close to the turbo, 
so short lines, but just looks a lot cleaner and keeps it out of the way. I went ahead and also put a Deutsch connector off these two brown wires. Actually, that's the EGT connector, which has a Deutsch connector on it, but there's these two brown wires that go to the solenoid. Can't see it from here, but at the end of those, I put another Deutsch connector. That was after I ran out of loom. I've since bought eighth inch loom, which will be the perfect size for that. So I'm gonna take the Deutsch connector off the pin, slip some loom over that, and then put the pins back into the Deutsch connector. My next project is to go ahead and replace this. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the valve cover. I'm still waiting on the bracket for the uh, coil and plug injectors from PRP. It's actually been almost a month since I've talked to them. Um, a little bit concerned, but they seem to have their stuff together. So I'm hoping that they reach out soon. I sent them an email. It has been over the holidays and New Year. And since they're on the other side of the earth, it's the good time of year for them. So they're probably all enjoying summer vacation right now. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, would very much like to hear back from them, but not going to force the issue. Um, they are working on it. I know they'll get it to me soon. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the valve cover and the throttle body so I can pull this out of here and replace the inlet with the AN fitting so I can finally tie into that stuff. Forgot to turn on my microphone, so I'll do a voiceover. After removing the baffle underneath the valve cover, I use these two by fours and a piece of cardboard. Be careful not to damage that breather tube there. And then make sure there's room underneath the PCV and the oil inlet to remove this piece. I use this dead blow hammer as well as a three H inch socket extension. You can just stick the socket extension down into where the hole is. It's flat on the top of the breather tube, as I'll show you right here. You can see it fits right in there. And then just use a couple taps with the dead blow hammer to get that to slide out. Didn't take much. When I was removing the baffle, I did use a screwdriver and I slightly nicked up this uh, connection there. So I'm going to use a little bit of uh, Permatex uh, Ultra Gray to run over that just to make sure there's no gaps before I reattach the baffle on the inside. Although I have new gasket, this one's actually in great shape because it was never actually used. There's just a little bit of a uh, ultra gray fold over. This part just moves out of the way when you move the baffle, pops right back in. So I think I'm just gonna reuse this one for now. Now to put in the new Racer X AN fitting. All right here, I used an AN cap, AN 10 size, uh, just so I don't damage the threads or that top part where that actually seats the fitting to. And then I'm just going to use the dead blow hammer to tap it back in the top. Couple taps and it's back in. Unscrew the cap here just to make sure the threads are all good. All good. I'm going to leave the cap on because I still have to drop the motor. Don't want to get any dirt or anything inside the engine until I'm done. Now back to the garage. I still have to drop the motor to get the crank pulley adapter on there. So that's going to be fun. And in doing that, I went ahead and bought a two-ton engine crane. Not because I needed two tons because the two-ton actually reaches a little farther. Since you have the trunk in the way there behind the engine, just makes it a little easier to get to all that stuff uh, with the longer reach. It does take up a ton of space, but this does fold down, and I do have an outdoor location that I can wheel this out to. Um, my old one just pretty much stayed outside, never had any rust issues or anything like that. Pretty heavy duty. Got this thing on sale. I think I paid just under 300 bucks for it. If I blow the engine up and go to GR, maybe I'll keep this for that. But for now, I don't really need this except for to drop the engine slightly so I can get to that damn pulley. So that's what I'm gonna work on today is once I swap the valve cover, I'm gonna attach the engine hoist to the hook here. Uh, this is the engine hook on the passenger side. Uh, so I'll hook that up so I can support the way the engine on this side, drop it down on this side so that I can get to the pulley, remove that nut. I got tools for that. And then the problem is that pulley is so close to the sheet metal on the inside of the engine bay there that you can't get it out. Um, so I'm gonna have to drop the engine down in order to clear that metal just a couple inches. The uh, OEM pulley, which is down there actually, is actually a little bit larger too than the underdrive aluminum pulley that I have on there. I also bought, because I didn't have any, um, two and three arm pullers. This one actually you can flip these around so the hooks are on the outside and this can pull through the holes on the aluminum one. So this is a little smaller. This one's a little bit larger, three arm puller. Just didn't want to get stuck halfway, so got those. Just wanted to show you, I did get the grommets finally. Put those in here, here, as well as uh, in the front of the engine bay going into the cabin, down around these two lines. I had to take them all the way out, run the cable, th or <laughs> run the grommet over the cable, and then put these all back in. So uh, the other grommet is behind the air filter there. I haven't actually squeezed it into the hole yet, but it's sitting right in front of the hole now. 
I just uh, didn't have the bench up there, so I'll do that later. And one last thing, I have these fuel lines, you can see down here. These came from Wolfcats originally. Uh, this is a 6AN fuel system. These are kind of old, it goes from here to the Aeromotive FPR, and then there's that drain hose that goes up here to the fuel return. I'm gonna bend that down below the intake, give this some slack on that line and get it out of the way. But the problem is on the filter side, it's a little bit tight. I don't like things, especially fuel lines, being that tight. You can see it runs from the rail, and then it goes down here to the fuel filter, and it's just a little tight for me. I don't like the way that's running, so I'm gonna actually replace that line, and while I'm at it, I might also add an E85 flex fuel sensor in case I go E85 on this car. I'm gonna mount that here, and I'll run a new fuel from the fuel filter to the firewall to the E85 from the E85 back down to the fuel rail. And the kit that I bought from Evil Energy has 10 foot of cable and all the AN angles that I need in order to do the entire new fuel line. And it's in black instead of that kind of faded blue. So I might just make the entire new fuel line from the filter back out of this stuff. This is PTFE material. It is E85 uh, applicable, so no issues there. I'm not sure about the existing fuel system if that's E85 proof. I bought that uh, Wolfcat fuel line kit back in 2004. So I don't even think many people were even aware of what E85 was back then. I don't even know if it existed actually. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace the whole line, I think. And it looks newer anyways. Pretty much everything's gonna look new after we're done. This'll kind of be more of that. So I think this whole kit was less than $60 with the fittings. Pretty good deal, got really good ratings. It's not the very best AN stuff you can buy, but it's exactly what I needed, so it'll work. I did start messing with the, and again, my apologies on this super fucking awesome gun here, uh, but I started setting up the AEM, or at least attempted to. I, I got a new HP laptop because I don't actually have, other than my company provided work laptop, I don't have any non-Apple laptops anymore, so. I went on Best Buy before New Year's and they had a really nice 16 gigabyte, one terabyte SSD hard drive, i7 processor, HP Envy laptop. It was a refurb for I think $240. So I think it sold new for around 15 or 2000 and it's only maybe a year old. So got pretty much almost the top of the line processors. It's like a generation old. It's not an i9, it's an i7. But it'll definitely handle everything I'm gonna throw at it with this. So I've moved all my files over that I've been keeping, all the you know diagrams, my manuals, all the pictures, all the yada yada. Anything that's not really content film related is on my big HP desktop. So I moved all that over to my new HP laptop. And this is gonna be the computer that I use to tune the AEM. So I've gone ahead and registered the AEM EMS system, uh, downloaded the drivers onto the laptop, I thought that I could power this through USB from the computer and push the updates to the EMS. However, um, this actually needs 12 volts and the only way to get 12 volts to it to actually turn it on to do that update is to go ahead and wire it in. So I haven't done that yet just because I haven't built the AEM connector yet, but that's gonna be here soon. So once I build the AEM connector, plug it in, at least get power and ground and a couple other cables to it, then I can go ahead and start mapping, doing the tuning and setting up the new sensors and the path that I want for all that. So that is coming together as well. I just want to do a brief update on that. Let me just look around again, make sure there's nothing else I want to show you. I think that's it for now. If I think of something else, I'll film it. All right, we'll be back.